Hi, it's John here. Welcome to another Excel video. What we're going to look at today is a body composition assessment sheet. Now, it can't do the assessment for you, but what it can do is help you identify when your levels of accuracy have strayed outside of some preset parameters. So this particular spreadsheet is part of a larger one that contains some uh, database kind of activity. But what we're just going to look at today is the assessment workspace, as I call it. And so I've filled in some basic parameters. I've put in the name and the team and the height and the weight, etc. And I've put in one trial of each measurement. Now, uh, depending on where you are in the world, sometimes this assessment process consists of some different measurements. But typically these eight sites are the standard profile as recommended by the International Body, ISAC. So typically you'd go through the whole body once and then you'd do a second assessment. So I'm just going to do that now. I'm just going to make some numbers up obviously. And so what's happened there is, is nothing spectacular really. We have used pretty good accuracy all the way through and as a result everything has been accepted. The result used in row 12 is the average of the two measurements. And it gives us a sum of 64.0 millimetres for our eight measurements. Now that's enough to push on and, and provide a, a report or some feedback to an athlete, but um, what say you get a result that isn't exactly how you might like it? It may be that you do two measurements that are too far apart and as a consequence your uh, errors or variability is too high. So what's this, what the spreadsheet's done here is it has made this particular cell, B11, red because it's telling you that you need to do a third measurement to make sure your accuracy is sufficient. So I'm just going to put 9 in there and now that's been accepted. And what's happened is row 12 is still using an average of the 3. So what triggered that cell to go red in the first instance is some settings that we had put together. So what I've said is that an absolute difference of two millimeters is okay but any more than that and it should go red. Sometimes when you get very lean athletes you might take a measurement on the bicep, for example, that's only 4 or 5 millimetres, in which case a 2 millimetre difference is quite large. So you might instead prefer to have a 10% variability. So relative and absolute variability, a little bit different. Now, the, the final one, and whoops, I spelt that incorrectly. Variability just refers to um, if you're doing more than two measurements, you get um, a variability score come into play. And basically what it's telling you is this tells you the variability to bet between measurements and suggests that you might like to retake the third measurement if variability is too excessive. So just to demonstrate that particular one, That has indicated that the variability is too high. As you can see here, 20% and you can see the formula. Basically, it's the standard deviation divided by the average. So variability is 20% and that's too high. So if I retake that third measurement as 11, it drops down to below 18%, which was our threshold that we set, and uh, the orange flag has gone away. So I didn't want to show you the form really, I wanted to show you the magic behind it. So I just showed you a second ago that we've got these three parameters. Now I've given them names. SF number, so that's a, a number difference, SF percent, and SF variability. So if we go over here, what I've done, and I use this quite regularly, I could have put a big nasty formula inside conditional formatting 
and that would have made those colors go red and orange like you've just seen but instead what I did and I'll just if, so if you just look up into the screen here what you see is a fairly nasty and long looking equation now I just want to break it down if I can because it's not that scary if you look at it basically what it is saying is that this first part that I'm highlighting here it's saying if there are three values which means you've entered three trials and if the variability calculated in cell B13 is greater than the variation threshold that we set on the previous page then you put a 2 in cell B7 and cell B7 will be used to trigger the conditional formatting later so basically that's all it's saying is if your variability 16 is higher than our preset one which is 18 percent flag a 2 otherwise go on to the next one so this should be false if I just highlight it that's better so that's true there is three but that's false 16% is less than 18% so I can move on so when I move on basically what it's saying is if there's only two values so if there's two numbers in B9 and B10 and now there's a, an extra little uh, function thrown in which is AND so it's saying that both of the next two criteria need to be met now the first of those two is that there is a difference between the highest and lowest of the two which is greater than SF number so we set that as 2 on the control panel page so SF number there is 2 and also in addition to that being true the difference between them has to be greater than 10% so if both of those two are true then what will happen is a 1 will get put in cell B7 and that can trigger conditional formatting later on so The conditional formatting exists in row 11. If I click on manage rules, it's actually fairly simple to be honest. I could have put the entire big formula inside the conditional format, but instead I kept it separate. It allowed these conditional formatting rules to be very simple. It's simply saying if B7 equals 1, make it red, if it's 2 make it gold, if it's neither leave it blank i.e. no coloured formatting so that's all that format is essentially what we are looking for is 1's or 2's in that particular column to tell us as you can see here put a, a couple of large numbers in and as you can see here we've got twos and ones and that is triggering the color changes so undo them all what I've got is a bit of space um, waist and hip uh, girths are sometimes taken body fat percentage is pretty much considered a no-no these days simply because the enormous variability in, in uh, the percentage fat calculation so uh,
typically nutritionists and sports scientists use just a sum of skin folds, but in different parts of the world that theory is slightly different. But I did put an equation in because people find it interesting. Um, and this is it. Basically it's using a, a composite of six out of the seven, uh, sorry, seven out of the eight measurements. So uh, it's a fairly um, decent formula calculation. Some of them only use one. So body composition assessment, very useful, um, really just around accuracy. So learning how to write some of those formulas, and I'll click on one now. You can see it's got a whole lot going on there. It's if equations using count, and ifs, max, etc. But none of the components of it are particularly scary if you just break it down. So uh, have a bit of a look. Ask me for the spreadsheet if you like and get onto it. Catch up with you soon. Thanks.